Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 and how well it might run a desktop environment Linux distribution in the event you might want to try and use one to replace a computer, maybe have a mini PC on the go. And today we're going to have a look at that. So I have a Raspberry Pi 4 here and I put it in this nice acrylic case. This is a $4 case. I'll go ahead and put the link for all of the, the parts that I have here. In the description, it comes with three heat sinks. We have this nice fan that plugs on into uh, into the port here. And uh, now these new Raspberry Pis are bootable on a USB drive. I'm not experimenting with that yet. This is still running everything off the SD card. So the SD card though does run fairly well. And uh, what we're gonna see here is that yeah, it's a viable solution if you want to do uh, single tasks at a time. It's not really good at multitasking. Uh, we'll kind of have a look at what that looks like on the desktop. Now, as far as being able to run external peripherals, um, you need to have like a, a 5 volt, 3 amp power supply if you're running anything off the USBs. But even that, I found, it gets a little bit problematic uh, if, you're, if your USB ports are drawing anything of significant power. So I was not actually able to run my microphone system, which runs on a, a simple uh, pile um, uh, single uh, channel board here. So what I actually did for that is I picked up when I got this, realizing that I might need to do something like this, is I ended up picking up this uh, four port USB three hub with external power. This will allow me to bridge anything that I want to run on the Pi that uses external power. So eventually this is going to have a hard drive on it. And so the hard drive runs between 700 milliamps and 0.9 uh, amps, so 7, you know, 0.7 to 0.9 amps, and so you're not going to be able to run that off of the basic power supply. And so having the external USB supply with its own power might also mean I can run the Pi off of this and the external hard drive off of this. It really depends. I will have to test that with this because I think this is really only pushing 2.5 amps as well. So you're going to want to run the Pi separately from the peripherals is what my guess is going to be. I'll know that more when I actually start working on the project. But what's inside the box on this guy, we have our basic port, which can be optional, uh, can function without the external power supply like most of these can. But you do have the external power supply here as well, which is what I needed to use to power the microphone. It was not powering. I like this board bin particular because you can turn on or turn off each USB port manually with these buttons at the top, which is very handy for testing or, or other systems as well. So utilizing that, uh, I'm using my internet is connected on the onboard wireless is what I did for that. When I did my initial board setup, I actually hardwired it into the ethernet cable. But after I got that up and running, just in the interest of having fewer cables being put up on the desk, we went ahead and set that up to our uh, to our external um, drive. Now the Bluetooth very laggy. Uh, I, I tested a Bluetooth keyboard; it was not viable. I tested a Bluetooth mouse; that was a little bit more viable. But there was a lot of lag. The keyboard would sometimes get stuck on a key, and you'd get like a hundred instances of the key, and then the Bluetooth would catch up, and it would stop, and then do the next thing you did. So I did have actually have a lot of issues with a Logitech Bluetooth keyboard, um, which I don't actually have here right now. That was something I borrowed from somebody. So that's kind of the, the functionality. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and have a brief look at the desktop. I don't do much over there because there's not much I can do. Uh, so we'll kind of have a look at what that looks like, and then we'll back be back here to wrap up. Okay, so here we are on the desktop, and I actually have the monitor going up here. What I wanted to point out here is as far as the performance of this is concerned, that uh, you can see that all of the processors are pretty much peaking. Now, they're not perpetually peaking when I'm not recording HD video, but right now with Simple Screen Recorder running, uh, you can see that uh, it is actually peaking out on me, so I may not be able to show you a whole lot more of what's going on. Um, but what I really wanted to just illustrate is the fact that we're still on a Raspberry Pi and being able to access a a full desktop environment like Plasma is actually still impressive. Maybe what I might want to do is go through and um, uh, kind of do this with maybe XFCE, see if it works a little bit better. 
I have a sneaky suspicion starting up Firefox with this recording may not go well, but I can confirm that you can actually play, uh, you can boot up Firefox, you can play YouTube videos. Uh, 480p on on the YouTube videos does work very well. I tried to do like HD. It does not support HD very well. I did uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. It does not like to do that well. So there's likely going to be seeing, um, uh, likely going to be some some issues with doing some of the more advanced features, at least on a full desktop environment like this. So you can see here it is running a little bit slower. That is because we are recording. So you can actually very clearly see, though, that uh, the RAM is not even coming close to being maxed out, but the processors absolutely are. And so that is probably a limitation of running a full desktop experience on the Raspberry Pi, is that, sure, while we have 4 gigs of RAM, we're not even getting anywhere close to a quarter of the RAM of this thing being used, but the processors are all just completely peaked out. And so that is definitely uh, definitely a concern. Uh, I can say, though, that um, everything else that runs on this does tend to run uh, fairly well as individual tasks. So I can actually get this. I can load up LibreOffice. I can type documents on it. I could do Firefox, type documents on it. Uh, any real application that's not amazingly system processor heavy is going to work on it. But... I, what I found is that you can't do multiple tasks. I wouldn't want to listen to music and try and write a book on this environment. I think that that's actually going to pose itself a little bit of a problem. And uh, and who knows? Maybe somebody has this worked out where it's better uh, processor capacity. Maybe if we try the Manjaro XSCE version, it might be a little bit better. Um, you know, who knows? But uh, let's see what's going on in the system processing here. So you can see a variety of different tools all running. Um, so this is going to be fairly standard for what you're going to be seeing. And that's, you know, desktop environments do actually take a lot of, uh, a lot of work, but nevertheless, the take home message of this is you can actually run a full desktop environment on a Raspberry Pi 4. It's still not quite there yet because of the limitations of the processing. Um, and, uh, Ultimately, though, yeah, I mean, it's it works. Uh, we're running on we're running our internet off of Wi-Fi rather than plugging it in. I did test Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is a little bit laggy, so if you want to test uh, either a mouse or a keyboard, it does lag out a little bit on this environment. Uh, again, if I try switching to a different desktop environment, maybe try uh, a basic window manager, something like i3, instead of a full desktop environment, that might work a little bit better. So who knows, maybe we'll give that a try. But I just want to show you guys real briefly here that here on Manjaro Plasma, it is working. I can do individual tasks. I can't really multitask. But it is actually going to work for you for, for simple tasks, even if you need a desktop environment. All right, so you can see there from the desktop that it is actually viable. It does work well. You can see that the RAM, this is a 4 gigabyte board one, and... The RAM is just fine. It never lags on the RAM, but the processors completely peak out. Now, I think that might probably be just because of maybe Plasma has too many resources going on in the background or whatever the case might be. What I might want to do is I might want to play around with like uh, OpenBox or just something else that's more of a window manager and less of a desktop environment. See if that causes any difference. Also, if you want to see a particular desktop environment or uh, maybe a particular distro, if you'd like to know uh, if uh, a particular distro will run and I mean, don't just be like, hey, I want to try and run Solace. They don't support this. It's got to be a distribution that supports the Raspberry Pi 4. If you want to see that, leave it in the comments. I'll go ahead and spin up a card and do a separate video on that particular distro. Uh, just It's just got to be something that already supports uh, supports the Raspberry Pi 4, go ahead and let me know and I will be glad to wipe this SD card out, throw that new distribution on it, and do another video looking at how that particular one runs. So be looking for another video in the future. I want to try a window manager instead of a desktop environment, see if that causes a boost in performance. But uh, the total overall conclusion is here. We weren't able to show you much on this because we are recording full HD video. But all that HD video you just saw was recorded on this Pi, which is quite incredible. That is good. I was able to work 
uh, play YouTube videos as long as uh, I think they, they started like 480, uh, 480p, which worked out great. Uh, that one was fine. If you get above that, you're going to get a lot of screen tearing and it didn't really work well in my tests. And uh, I could do individual tasks so I could pull up LibreOffice and write a document without any real problems. I could pull up YouTube videos without any real problems, but you're not likely to pull up a YouTube video, listen to it while you're typing a document. It's going to be, despite having a quad core processor, you're going to be limited to a single task at a time, but you're going to be able to get take care of it uh, pretty well. So that's my overall take on this one. And I'll test out some other desktop environments and other distributions in the future. So leave me those in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.